cloud run to dimension percent that less than the proposal based on the poem when tomorrow is to run by a 10 year old. The purpose of this work is to exemplify the applicability literature has in EFL. So let's start by reading the poem. When tomorrow is too long, and if a juggler arrived in town with an eagle in a glittering cage, we were of gift to numbers, we were of the season, we were of too light and worse. His close fit presses a honey cake into a national loft. With his cap tooth trying for a wand, he throws out one thing with one hand, and with the same pipe, takes in more than seven. I have been a victim of inflation, and he says we are going to be the beneficiary or victims. You cannot be head and tail, one or the other. His attendants foster foster following the rules of Paul. The rest of the world live in a drought of Daniels. If there's ever a jaguar in the town with an eagle in a living cage, should all the trappings of democracy do not allow him to perform. He's going to be the beneficiary of all comes and he the victim of that gap tooth tie of one. To do him what you do to a cobra in the dark step. Let tomorrow be too long. Tenure order Nigeria 1948. So we're going to start with a brief literary analysis. We are going to talk about some elements of the poem. The first one is the subject matter. The subject matter is the main concern here in the poem. In this case, we find we found that uh, the poem is focused on a juggler, and this juggler is mentioned in every stanza, or at least there is a reference of him in every part of the poem. So now that we know that he's a main concern here, we can talk about another element, which is the central idea. In this case, the central idea is Nigerians must be aware of the things that the Yoruba is going to do because he's bound to be the beneficiary and Nigerians the victims. So the speaker is trying to transmit us a message. In this case, the message is that we have to be aware to pay attention to the things that the juggler is going to do because he represents a danger in town. He starts to transmit this idea with the with this in, in when he starts to say, we were of gift and numbers. So we were. You have to pay attention, take care with those gift and numbers because he's going to do things that is going to hurt you. The speaker is a third person singular. Uh, participant substitute with no mental accents. He started to transmit his ideas with the perspective of an oppressed man who had experienced how the juggle treat people in the past. So now he's giving advice probably to future generations because the word tomorrow seems to be the beginning of another day, something that will happen in the future. So he's giving advice from his own experience for people who are going to live uh, in the future and can avoid this uh, disgusting experience with the juggler. Uh, the audience, the poem is for all classes of Nigerians. I mean, students, workers, armed forces, intellectuals, everyone who lives in town must be aware of this danger. So uh, we know that it's in Nigeria the place we are talking about here in the poem, the citizens probably are Nigerians, but the year is not explicitly declared. I'm talking about the setting. Uh, the year, there is any reference of when this juggler arrived in town. So uh, as, we have, as we are considering that the juggler could arrive in the future or had arrived in the past, so we have to recognize that we don't know exactly of when. What you have there in your handout is Nigerian 1948. 1948 is the autobiography because in this year is when Tenure Audi was born. So it is impossible that it's talking about this specific year. Uh, there is another thing I want to discuss with you are the tongues. I perceive the speaker voice as advisory because he's giving advice, I also consider that he's being controversial because he's talking about topics that create controversy. For example, he's talking about uh, economical, political and social problems. He's also convinced because he's very sure about his ideas. 
I also consider that he's concerned. Concerned about the situation, about the danger, uh, about the damage that uh, the juggler can cause in town. Now that we have discussed this element, I want to talk a little bit about some devices. This is clarify some ideas I have talked to you before. Uh, for example, the first thing I want to clarify is the meaning of the juggler. As you see, the juggler is the main concern here, and we're talking about figurative language, so we need to decode why, what does this juggler represent. Well, I consider for myself that the juggler refers to a politician. Why I'm saying so? Because uh, there are two words that are related to politics. The first one is inflection. Inflection is a, a problem, an economical problem caused by political problems. So it's uh, really connected with politics. The other word is democracy. Democracy is a system of government, and you know, uh, this is a system of government, it applies politics. In the poem you read, you read, show all the trappings of democracy. That means avoid democracy. So is 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 really talking about politics. These two words are related to that topic. So I decided to consider that the juggler is a politician. And if we consider that the juggler is a politician, we can analyze another thing that the speaker say in the poem. There is a part when he say, do to him what you do to a cobra in your doorstep. So he is comparing the juggler to a cobra. Now these two things had a relationship because it's a comparison. In this case, snakes, cobras are cultural representation of gender in any culture. Let me illustrate this idea. Imagine that one day you're arriving home and then you saw a snake like this one in the doorstep. What would you do? Well, I'm sure that some of you will run as far as you can, but uh, those one bravers are going to try to hit or kill the snake. Anyway, you will consider that this snake is a danger because it can beat you and inject some venom. With that venom, you can even die. So you consider that the snakes are danger, are a danger, so you will run as far as you can from that. So the speaker is telling to us to to the juggler the thing that you would do to a cobra. So be as far as possible from that snake, or consider it as a danger. Try to avoid the snake. Try to avoid the juggler. And for me, try to avoid politics, uh, politics and politicians. Uh, the other device I want to talk a little bit is about a uh, social situation that the poem represents. Here you have uh, that the poem say, his attendance poster poster for in the load of a fall. The rest of the world live in a drought of Daniels. So the juggler has attendance. And these attendants live in abundance, in happiness. They were rich. Why the rest of Nigerian live in a drought of Daniels, inflection, poverty. So here you have a contrast. What some people who support the government, the politician, the juggler, were living in, in abundance, some of them were living in poverty. So this is a social situation that the poem is describing, the things that the juggler do. Of course, the people who support the juggler does not, uh, are, victim, are not victims. Victims are the ones who do not, the rest of the world, the rest of citizens. So I know that you will feel, uh, you will understand this idea. Okay, the other thing I want to talk a little bit is about a honey cake international love. You know what is a honey cake? Something delicious, uh, it is beautiful, a honey cake. So sometimes we can analyze that a honey cake represents the potential this nation had, but it ends in a national love. It ends in poverty, in inflection. It ends not as a honey cake. This is the difference between a honey cake and a national love. So the speaker is saying to us 
the, the honey cake ends in an ancient love. So there is a damage here. But why this happened? Because his close fit presses. Now he converts, the juggler converts a honey cake into an ancient love. So now that we have this idea in mind, we can analyze another aspect, which is the title. The title, When Tomorrow is Too Long. Uh, when Tomorrow is Too Long, for me, is like When Tomorrow is Too Late. When Tomorrow is Too Late to Change Anything That You're Doing Now, So You Need to Take uh, uh, to, to, to Change Now Your Situation, Because Tomorrow Will Be Too Long, Too Late to Change Anything That You Have Done Right Now. So, uh, if you have any other uh, analysis of the title, and I think that also is talking about like uh, asking for a new system, a new day, a new political system, probably, uh, or asking to those future generations to take care of this gender um, to avoid it. Well, this poem is an example of the relationship we have with culture, society, and literature. Why? Because uh, it, it is in a society which are Nigerians, people living together in common agreements. Uh, they express their idea through literature, their idea, the ideas that they feel comfortable with. That's culture. Culture are the things that makes you feel identified and makes you feel comfortable. Society are those people living together and literature are those manifestations of how people live in a certain society. So one is connected with the other, they coexist together and we cannot separate them. As you see here in the, po in the poem, well, we can analyze how these people, uh, their views from Nigerians. We can analyze that they're, uh, they're, they had feelings of disillusionment, concern, uh, resentment related to politicians. And those are their views, how they look at uh, politicians. They look, they look at politicians as if, if he were uh, uh, a juggler. So you see the, the view, the perspective, how they are uh, analyzing this juggler. Uh, the other thing I want to talk a little bit are my theory, my theoretical basis. Uh, there is always a theory behind everything, so there is a theory behind my lesson plan. I want to talk a little bit about, about it because I want to use this relationship, culture, society, literature, the ones that I mentioned before here in this poem, for uh, teach an EFL class. Using literature in your classes has many benefits. You can teach cultural aspects, you can teach uh, linguistic aspects of, of, in, during your class. So it, it, is, it is available a uh, tool for your classes using literary text. But we cannot avoid the challenge, the challenge that you represent. It is not easy. It is not easy even for us to read a poem and to understand it. So for your students, when you give it to give them a poem like this one they will find many words that they are not going to understand and they might be might feel frustrated because they don't get it so how can we uh, overcome this challenge well I have an idea I'm going to use uh, the theme of my poem that is politics as a topic for my class why? Because it is controversial. I know that my students will feel identified with that topic and they will feel motivated to talk about it. So uh, here we go to the method, the methodology I, I choose to work on. I decide to work with two approaches. There are many ways to approach literature in your classroom, but I decide to work just with two approaches, the personal growth approach that deals with uh, help your students how to grow this person while they are learning a language, a uh, foreign language. The other approach I'm going to use the communicative approach because I want them to uh, to express their ideas, their thoughts, 
and I want to help them to communicate. My classroom will be a real com communicative situation. And the personal growth approach also implies to uh, include your students' experiences as part of the class. That will help them to, to motivate them to talk. Uh, okay, my method, I decided to work with three objectives. The first one is going to be uh, for adults, because I'm going to work with adults from private institutes, I decide to, if you're going to talk about politics, I recommend you to use a private state, a private place, because you know that, a uh, private uh, place, because you know that sometimes in public places, some things might be misunderstood and could create uh, controversy. So uh, I'm going to work with adults, because I think that this topic requires experience, and it also requires uh, major people because it is a controversial topic. Um, I need people who respect each other. So uh, uh, my students are intermediate. That means according to the Common European Framework Reference that they can uh, deal with uh, basic grammar structures and they can express their ideas. So that's what I need, people who can express their ideas, their thoughts, their experiences. Now we're going to work during 19 minutes with three auditive. The first one, to understand the cultural views of the text and express opinions about it. I need them to understand how Nigerians feel and they're going to do that by reading the text and, expre and expressing their, their opinions. The second, to increase opportunities for interaction with other students, defending with arguments their political opinions. So they have to support their ideas and to express what they think about politics. The third one, to improve the students' reading, writing, and speaking skills with activities that promote critical thinking. So this is going to be our reading class, but I'm going to use other skills, for example, they're in the at the end of the class, we're going to do a writing activity and then we're going to do a speaking activity to involve others, other skills so it will be an integrative class. To promote critical thinking, why critical thinking? Because they have to reflect on a controversial topic and they, have to, and they will be in front of someone else's ideas. So they will have to support their own ideas and to, you know, to reflect on someone else's ideas. The, uh, there is a little bit about content approach here because I'm going to use the poem as a content to teach other things about our language, for example, to express opinions. So uh, for the first stage, the warm up, uh, the teacher introduced the class with the following activity. On a piece of paper, each student write down three ad words which he feels describe politics. All the papers are collected, then the teacher reads aloud the three words the student wrote. No one has to know who wrote each word that will be for the warm-up, that will activate a schematic because they have to reflect on words that are related with politics. Then we're going to do the pre-reading, you know, the activity that we do before reading. The teacher will ask the students for the meaning of the whole words. You know, I know that there will be words in the text that they are not going to understand, so I'm going to clarify some of them before we read the text. Here you have uh, which are the words I'm going to clarify. The first one is his post-fit presses, because I really need an image for this uh, phrase. I think that it's really difficult to, to define, so I will prefer to with an image use an image to help me to explain them what a cross fit presses mean. The second one is an eagle in case that they don't know what an eagle is. For I think that this verb is not very common so I decide to help them with that. Uh, it means place uh, move about cheerfully. It means like fancy happiness. Of course the juggler is the main point here. To write, 
and election promises. Why election promises if the text does not say anything about it? Because the text says, says trappings of democracy, and trappings of democracy is something very difficult to explain. So I think that by using an example, I can explain then an idea of what trappings of democracy are. Now, uh, after I have discussed with them some of these uh, details, some of these words, we can work with the reading stage. The first reading, they will read it uh, individually, and they will underline if they found any word that they don't know, any interesting idea, something that they want to explain. The, for the second reading, the second time that we're going to read the text, I'm going to read the text uh, aloud using the correct uh, intonation pattern. Then we're going to discuss some of the ideas of the poem. For example, I'm going to ask them what this poem, this, this poem is about. Uh, what do you think it is? Uh, what, what do you think this, uh, this speaker is talking about? So here I'm going to discuss to see what they have understood from the text. Then for the post reading, after we read, after we read, we're going to, uh, I'm going to ask some questions. The first one, what politicians might be like jugglers? The second one, what similarities do you find between politicians of your country and the ones described in the text? The third one, what warming advice might you give to the people of your town? These questions are critical. Why? Because they have to reflect. For example, the first one, they have to reflect on the meaning of the word yogurt from the text. So that means to analyze almost all the text. Then you have to do a comparison between cultures, your politicians with Nigerian politicians. Always comparison between cultures works because they have to compare and they have to analyze and think and reflect what they are comparing. The last question is for just yes, to to do like a repetition, like a full model of the poem. The poem is an advice for for other citizens. So I will ask them to give an advice to other people from their town, for people from their communities. And they will see if they can apply the same the same ideas that the speaker had had applied on, on his text. Uh, for the wrap up, the last but not least part of my lesson plan, students are organized in a conversational line. That means that one is in front of the other to discuss their answers. The teacher accepts if if. The students read their answers, but they should explain with their own words. So they are free to, to talk, to discuss, to support their ideas, to defend their arguments. This will be the part when the speaking skill will be developed. Not at all, but they would have time to communicate and to talk a little bit about it. So now we're going to conclude. Uh, I would like to say that uh, using literature is not easy, it is not, but it is not difficult. And um, if we are set to, to deal with it, it is, a, a, it is a benefit for all of us, not only for our students, but also for us, because we are, we are, are, we are still learning English as a foreign language and we need to learn more than grammar or vocabulary. We need to learn how these people think. The English from uh, the people from the English speaking world, so it creates awareness of the language that you are using, not just in the uh, linguistic aspect, but there are other aspects that we need to focus on. The other thing I would like to say is that we are learning from other realities. We are learning from other people, from other cultures, other histories. So we are really going to uh, reach and grow as persons because we are dealing with other uh, ideologies. So that will help us a lot, even in our personal lives. Uh, use approach to teach literature. So do not be afraid and use the one that better supplies your needs, your audience needs. 
so that will help you to use it uh, but use it as a as it should be used not as a just put a poem there and try to deal with it so try to uh, create opportunities to use literary text but use them as a tool and you have many ways to do it uh, we are not just teaching our language we're not just teaching how to speak we're teaching how to think that is why we need to include uh, critical thinking in our classes. We need to teach more than just how to express ideas, but we need to teach these people how to how to deal with their ideologies from the English speaking world. Uh, and never forget to enjoy your classes, be um, a good teacher, and make your students to enjoy using literature. Make it make it as an enjoyable experience and they will love it, and then you can use it anytime you want to. So, uh, I would like to, uh, to say that don't just teach our language, don't just teach how to speak, but teach how to think. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you like it. If you have any comments, any idea, please write bye.